Hello and thanks for joining us on how to grow your own etrogs. I'm going to be showing some common examples of etrogs and some common problems that you'll experience or that you'll see uh, and give you some basic facts and tips to help you along your process. I really wish that I would have had the answers to a lot of these questions and I'm sure I'm not the only one so I'm going to go ahead and share that information with you. So the first thing is that etrogs can kind of come in different shapes and sizes and that's okay and they have very different varieties, uh, but they are prone to uh, being killed by overwatering very, very, very easily. Uh, usually this process is called root rot, where you overwater and there and it ends up being developing some sort of uh, fungus or a suffocation of the plant. Sorry, let me get back to being close. A suffocation of the plant. Basically, it means that the roots of etrogs and citruses actually will suffocate if there's too much water, which is why, again, you need to, uh, I guess I should backtrack. First thing, you can't plant etrogs in dirt. No dirt. You have to plant them in very high drainage soil, either a cactus mix or a citrus mix. And don't chintz any money because these things are very, very sensitive, so they really don't want too much water. Um, I know it can sound kind of ridiculous, but it's all, it's going to be completely better to underwater them than to overwater them. So uh, I'll give you an example. This is a Moroccan variety etrog. Now this etrog is starting to have problems. You're starting to see that the leaves are starting to pinch and get discolored. If I can get this to focus on it. There we go starting to yellow and get pinched out. That leaf down here is yellowing and the yellow is starting to go more toward the leaf and it doesn't, it just slowly, slowly starts spreads. That's usually what happens with root rot is it starts to yellow at the tips like this and then it'll slowly, slowly continue to go back until it starts killing things. This one may or may not be safe because I'm getting some new growth, which is a good sign, but it's kind of hard to tell with these, but usually once root rot settles in, once your plant has been overwatered, it's just gonna slowly die no matter what you do. You know, you can try underwatering it, you can try changing the soil, but once it's kind of happening, it's a good likelihood that you're gonna lose your plant. So, first things first, don't overwater. Uh, I guess that's the second thing. First thing, high drainage soil, good quality, organic stuff. I'll try to put a link to a very good quality brand in the uh, comment section of this video. Second thing, after you get high drainage soil, don't overwater. That's very, very, very big. Uh, if you've seen my other video uh, on how to uh, get them germinated from seed, uh, you can you can get the plants growing and then transplant them to little pots like this in dirt. You can actually get them to be growing quite nicely in to uh, or in the in the coffee filter. So let me show you some that actually are on the younger spectrum. These are some Yemenite variety etrogs. So these are all very, very young. As you can see, they still have their first leaves. The first two leaves that pop out actually don't photosynthesize. So uh, sometimes they'll fall off once they get kind of useless. Some, they don't tend to usually grow very, very big, except for this one. This one right here actually ended up developing very big, weird ones, their first little baby ones. But typically, they will start growing extra if I can get this one in particular to show you. They'll start growing little extra leaves. There you go. In this angle, you can kind of see if I can get to develop the little leaf in the middle. Once you start seeing this little leaf, that little leaf can photosynthesize. And once that leaf starts happening, once there becomes a leaf that takes in nutrients, you can start uh, fertilizing your etrog plant. Now you've got to make sure that you don't over fertilize because at this point they're very, very, very young and the over fertilization can kill them. So, but as soon as you start seeing little baby things and sometimes they'll be in the middle, sometimes they'll be much more prominent in the middle like this one has, right? This one's got a big old one that grew out of the middle, right? And then I'm trying to see if I can find one that has almost no, let me see. I can show, I can't really see one. But yeah, so they'll start growing extra ones. But these are what they look like as babies. 
kind of not really particularly looking like anything. The next step up from this is they will look something like this. These are some Moroccan variety ones. So, very, very tall, kind of tanky. I don't quite understand if I've done something wrong or it's just natural development, but sometimes I'll get these leaves that just kind of grow straight up for some reason. Sometimes they will grow to the side, straight up, side. Haven't done anything different. Seems like the plant wants to do that. Here's an example of growing one to the side and straight up for some reason. Uh, and every now and again, they want to grow crooked. I think it's a matter of just where they're getting the light and how they feel they have to get it as they follow the sun's path. So when they start getting a little bigger, this is what they'll look like. So these are probably two months old. And then these ones are probably six to eight months old. These are Chabad Yanaba variety or Yanova variety. And as you can see, they are quite a bit bigger than the other ones. I kind of have to zoom out a lot in order for you to see them. But the leaves, if you have any kind of citrus tree, you'll notice the leaf looks pretty much the exact same as a normal citrus tree. So this one has probably been over fertilized a bit. It's starting, it's still got its first two leaves that it started out with. As you can see from these orange spots, it's a sign of over fertilization. So I probably don't need to fertilize this one anymore. And I could probably understand that because the color of the leaf is very, very, very green in the majority of the big leaves. Typically, when the leaves are mostly yellow, let's see, so this one's got a little bit of yellow to it. If all of your leaves are looking like this, that means that you are, the, the plant is, does not have enough nutrients. And you'll see that if you underfeed these plants, you know, this is, this is such a catch-22 when it comes to these at rocks. If you underfeed them, they won't grow. You'll look at them and they'll be the same size for a long time. If you feed them just the right amount, they'll grow quickly. If you overfeed them, they'll slow down growing and they'll start burning like this. So you kind of just have to be very careful and adjust, 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 and never give them too much at once, but always make sure that uh, you are feeding them because otherwise they just won't grow. These guys right here were almost the same size uh, because I didn't know when I was supposed to start feeding these things. I didn't know when I was supposed to start giving them nutrients. Uh, so they were like this for like half of their life. And then I started feeding them and they just started growing and getting really, really great big seeds. So let me show you the fertilizer that I use. Of course, you're welcome to use any kind of citrus fertilizer that's available. This is a German This is a German liquid fertilizer. You mix this with water and it tells you the proportions in English. I'll go ahead and post a link for this uh, in the comment section. I'm sure they'll love the extra uh, boost in business because, you know, the whole world just wants to grow out drugs, I'm sure. So it's got instructions on the back. This is very powerful stuff. Too much, you'll kill it. Not enough is probably a good sign because then we'll still grow. Um, I have found that for these etrogs in general, this particular fertilizer is a little low on potassium. So every now and again, uh, when I make a big gallon size batch, I'll go ahead and add some more potassium, like half a teaspoonful or a quarter of a teaspoonful into the, into the water. And that'll help uh, get your leaves especially green. So uh, you can use this like probably for like a few months straight or like maybe two months straight. Uh, but then you'll probably start to notice that uh, your plants are starting to taper off in terms of growth. Uh, when that happens, again, just start adding some Epsom salts, and that'll increase the magnesium. Sorry, is it magnesium or phosphorus? No, it's acid and magnesium, yes. Again, half a teaspoon of Epsom salts, add it to this, and then pour in, and it'll be great. Uh, this has uh, directions for seedlings, and seedlings are basically these size buddies, the young ones. These are probably also still seedlings. These are not quite full trees, but not quite seedlings either. So you want to feed them a dosage that's somewhere in the middle of those directions. Um, but again, if you start seeing this yellowing that happens, and or like an oranging that starts going back toward the center, you probably have some sort of root rot. And you've probably uh, created a habit of overwatering, which is very not good. 
Uh, so these little burn spots are probably not the biggest deal in the world if the rest of the plant seems very, very, very healthy. And those are my tips. Oh, if you live in a very deserty climate, if you put these out there too long, they'll die. So you want to taper them in for how much uh, sun they get at the beginning of their lives. Uh, these little ones out here, since right now we're in the middle of summer, I only give them an hour or two of sunlight a day. These ones I might might do up to three hours of sunlight, but that means like I'm bringing them in by 11 o'clock in the morning. These guys, I can possibly leave them out all day as long as I put them in an area that starting from noon on, they're in shade. Uh, if they get bigger than this, then they could probably be out there all day, no problem, and nothing will bother them. But yeah, so uh, common problems check and some common tips and go ahead and have some fun with your etrogs.